<laughs> okay. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Morris. I'm one of the pastors here at Christ Church, and I'm with Bad Carl Phillips again as uh, we gather for our second uh, conversation with Carl to uh, reflect on the message from this past Sunday and other things that uh, we might want to chat about. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. Great to see you. Good to be seen and not viewed. <laughs> uh, so uh, Sunday we continued our uh, the Gospel According to U2 uh, worship series, or the Gospel and U2, not According to U2. Um, <laughs> and uh, we we looked at a song called "Crumbs from Your Table." Um, not a big hit for U2, um, but on a big hit album, uh, had a had a dismantle an atomic bomb. I think it won them six uh, six Grammys. Um, but the song uh, is, is really an interesting song about poverty and uh, about um, um, kind of becoming aware of the needs of those around us and how, how we might use the resources we have to help. Uh, so let me just ask you from off the top, what, what are some of the things that, uh, that jumped out at you or sparked your interest in, in, in the service? Well, um, in, in bad Carl fashion, uh, <laughs> Let's start with the scripture, sure. um, because it reminded me of a joke, uh, and and I'm I'm sure God is shaking his head at this point, and I'm <laughs> sure you're a little I'm worried. Asian. You're worried about what joke? Um, but the, <laughs> the 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 scripture, especially the end of the scripture, when uh, um, when there's conversation about. Uh, going back and telling my brothers or, uh, you know, what could possibly happen to them. I'm reminded of the, the preacher and the cab driver story yeah. about both of them dying and going to heaven. And uh, um, the, the cab driver steps up and St. Peter said, ah, yes, we've been, we've been waiting for you. We've got, we've got that mansion up on the hill there ready, ready for you. So he, he walks off and the minister steps up and, um, St. Peter said, oh, yes, we've, we've been expecting you as well. And uh, you have that one-bedroom apartment over, over there to the right. And, and the minister says, what? He said, he said, the cab driver, he gets a mansion on a hill, and I get a one-bedroom apartment? And Peter said, St. Peter said, well, he said, you know, every time you preach, people fall asleep. But every time he drove, people prayed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that that scripture reminded me, and, yeah. and, and I'm sure God is shaking his head. But anyway, <laughs> well, you know, and for folks who who maybe haven't haven't uh, listened to the message yet, uh, the scripture we used was this really uh, uh, tough story from the Gospel of Luke yeah. about the rich man and Lazarus, uh, the rich yeah. man uh, traditionally known as Dives, um, right. who doesn't help Lazarus, who was uh, at his doorstep, doesn't even see him really. Um, and ends up ends up in Hades uh, while yeah. um, while Lazarus is at the uh, in the bosom of Father Abraham. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is most people go to this story to talk about heaven and hell, and it's really not what Jesus was was focusing on here. Um, I think we miss the point of the story when we go there. Um, but anyway, and, and I and, and that that ties in very well with the song. I. I didn't know the song, um, and you know, as I shared last week, Thursday mornings we uh, we talk about the upcoming sermon, and uh, Jim Genova led the group, and uh, and and he he read the words to the song, and and I really had to go back and and look at it a couple of times. Just uh, there's a lot in there, um, yeah. and, and there and the whole backstory about. Uh, Bono traveling to to Africa and uh, and seeing the AIDS situation and and coming back to the United States and talking to people about helping and and having all that fall on the deaf ears. Um, yeah, it, you know that that also is a tough story to hear. Uh, Absolutely. L let alone the scripture being a tough story to hear. Right. So it it uh, it, it was. It was a bit of a guilt trip for me, um, <laughs> kind of in a good way. I think, I think we need to have our toes yeah. stepped on every now and then. Yeah. Well, it's a wake-up story. I think. Yeah. I think that was the intention of Jesus, and and really spirituality is about waking up. Um, 
because we we have this tendency to walk through life in this unconscious manner uh, asleep uh, sometimes of, of the need going on around us and so stories like this uh, serve to as a wake-up call uh, for sure. I, I think too in, in relationship to the situation we're in now um, with, with COVID um, and with Black Lives Matter and everything else that's going on, uh, we've, we've really become more and more aware. And it, uh, everybody that I talk to, and, and I'm, thinking, I'm thinking really now in, in terms of the, the Sunday morning coffee talk, um, everybody on there is just anxious to find an opportunity where they can do more. Right. That was that was a lot of our conversation on Sunday about right. What else could we do? Uh, where else should we look? And you know, I I, I think uh, I think those answers uh, will be revealed to us, and if we just take the time to listen first. And but you know, I'm I'm kind of one of those guys that um, I want to hurry up and get out of the gate and yeah. and, and yeah. start start doing more. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the cool things is uh, we're, we're starting this uh, race reconciliation and social yes. justice uh, team at Christ Church, and, and they're going to be coming out with some really practical ways in a variety of different areas that people can get involved. So uh, folks will be hearing more about that in the coming weeks, but I'm really excited about the possibilities. Um, I, I, I am as well. Yeah, look, we're all looking forward to that. Yeah. So in the message, um, you know, I, at least the approach that I took with this is, um, you know, how do we wake up? How do, why, why should we care about those who are being impacted by poverty? Um, why should we care about people um, for whom a socially uh, unjust system um, is impacting their lives in negative ways? And, um, you know, just briefly, um, I talked about uh, three or four different things. You know, one was that, um, you know, if we're, if we're going to wake up to this, so we got to recognize that, that issues of poverty and injustice is something that God cares about. And so we ought to care about it. Um, and I think I mentioned there like uh, 20, 27, 2100 verses in scripture. Addressing, uh, Jesus taught more about poverty than he did um, about just about anything else. And to be honest with you, I, I I know that, but but I didn't I didn't realize there were that many that many verses, and that was that was a real real eye opener for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, I think I think as as people of faith, you know, we care we ought to care about what what God cares about. Um, we know we're growing in our faith as we as we uh, um, discover ourselves becoming more interested in and moved by the things that interest and move God. Um, so. Well, I, I know I recently uh, have, have had my eyes open um, to, uh, to a history of, of injustice. Yeah. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm a little angry um, that I didn't know some of these things. Yeah. Um, or, or were never taught anything. And, and, and what immediately comes to mind is, um, is redlining. Right. Um, you know, and, and you can go back, you can go online and see Greensboro's redline areas. Yeah. Um, and then read about what was going on in those situations and, um, the, the fact that we were living in it and among it, um, and and not really understanding the impact, um, it, it it just it's a major guilt trip, and it's yeah it, it, it's something I'm I'm anxious in some small way to to be able to say to my grandkids I I helped cor correct this or we started a movement to correct this or whatever. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A um, couple of the other things that we talked about in, 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 this, um, in the message was, um, you know, we need to care for folks um, who are experiencing poverty and justice because um, the reality is we're all connected. Um, and, you know, I use, I use the, the creation story uh, as one example of that. Um, this, the second creation story of Adam and Eve, and it's metaphorical, obviously, 
Um, but I think that's what the, what the faith has been getting at from, from the get go that, you know, that we are all, we're all connected together as brothers and sisters. Um, oh, we just lost you. Did I come back yet? <laughs> yes, you are now back. <laughs> I was disconnected and now I'm connected, which is my point exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How cool was that? <laughs> yeah. Um, that, yeah. that would be believable, but I'm always disconnected and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think that's something we forget, um, that connection that we all have. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that we're, we're, we're we and they thinkers, you know, we're not, uh, us yeah. thinkers. And, uh, if we can get rid of that word, they, uh, we'd, we'd all be better off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know you, you had mentioned something in your sermon about, um, what, when you were making your. I don't know, nine or 10 points. I lost track. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, when, when, like when, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, about when, when we get involved and, and we, uh, we start taking action uh, and doing things, not just, not just throwing money at it, uh, that it, that it changes us. And, uh, I think a lot about my experiences at Glenwood and, um, and, and, and I feel comforted in knowing names like Bobby and Danny and yeah. Miss Betty. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't know those people before and, and now I'm connected to them by name and, and I can remember a few weeks ago, uh, you know, I've been I've been um, kind of the the greeter guy and making sure people stay six feet away from one another, and and it and it it truly brought me to tears when when several of them knew my name. Yeah. Um. And I'm and I'm hoping that that. Um. that that changed their life some that they know that somebody is not only helping to feed them but that care about them yeah yeah you know, I, I really try to make it a point to remember their name and use their name um, because they're they're people they're not just a they yeah Names bring dignity and put a face to to the injustice and the poverty that people experience. Yeah, yeah, and it and it it causes you, it causes us, I think, to care more. Yeah, and and we were talking um, during um, Sunday morning coffee talk about uh, about the caring factor. You know, seeing people on the street, and uh, that are that are holding up signs, and right. Uh, I remember one time um, I felt kind of driven to do something more about that, and um, I met with at at the time he was head of urban ministry, mm -hmm. uh, and we had breakfast together, and he he talked about not giving money. Mm -hmm. But um, but a bag with a, with bottled water and fruit and um, and maybe a bus token and maybe a McDonald's uh, little gift certificate. Um, but but also a list of here's all the places in Greensboro where you could get help. Yeah. And uh, um, I, I, I never I never moved very far off that meter when I wanted to start something and I. I'm feeling the need to get back after that, but, but he said something that really also struck home for me that um, we need to always say hello. We need to always wave. Yeah. We need to always acknowledge, um, not necessarily do anything, but not 
have them feel as though they're not seen. And he said, how would it, how would you feel if your job was to stand out in a, a median strip all day long, holding up a sign and asking for money? Uh, for some people, that's, that's their job. Yeah. So. Which brings us right back to the story. The rich man never even saw Lazarus, who Jesus makes the point was sitting yeah. at his doorstep. Exactly. I mean, which, right. which Jesus paints a picture. You basically tripped over the guy every time you went in and out of your house. Yeah. But yeah. You, you never saw him. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the other point. Besides the joke, that's the <laughs> other thing that the scripture reminded me of as well. Is, yeah. It, it's not not pretending like it like the problem doesn't exist yeah, yeah or like that individual doesn't exist yeah 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 well any anything else that uh that you heard this this weekend that was helpful or that you'd want to comment on no i well to be honest with you just just um uh, as i said before it was a guilt trip um but but in a good way and uh, i know I know how I feel. I know how my family members feel. Um, I know how the Tuesday, the, the Thursday morning men's lack of support group feel because you know we're we're all ready, willing, and able to to do more. And and I the coffee talk group is the same way. We all kind of talked about um, things that we could do now and anxious to hear through the programs that the church are being offered, what we could do next. Yeah. We're, I think we're for all of us. Yeah. We're ready to be a people of action, I think. Which is awesome. And I think, I think what we all have to remember is we're not called to do everything. We're called to do our one thing well. Um, so we all got to figure out what that one thing is that makes that. Yeah. Happen. And, 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 you know, there, there will always be poor people in the world. Um, but, but we always have to, continue to try to do our best to yeah uh, to de cre decrease that divide uh, somehow yeah and and the best place to start is acknowledging that it exists and acknowledging that that those people that need help exist and not not ignoring the situation yeah yeah well thanks so much for your time carl um Next week, we move on to a blues song, uh, When Love Comes to Town. Uh, it's a song that uh, you two recorded with B.B. King. Uh, it's, a, it's a really great song, uh, and we're going to tie it because the song's about a wee little man named Zacchaeus. So <laughs> okay. we'll be chatting next week about that. That's, that's one of my favorite Bible stories as a kid. Oh, cool. I'm not sure why, but it, yeah. it is. So maybe, maybe that, uh, that reason why will come to mind when I when I hear it again. Great. great. All right. Well, have a great day and thanks so much for your time. Thank you, sir. Make